Hi. Hi. Hi there. How are you? You are right. good. I'm good. Oh, it's so nice that you picked up the phone. <laughs> Skype phone. <laughs> well, you know, I'm I'm just doing finishing off some work. So I'm about to go downstairs, but I thought, you know, I usually talk to teachers if they want to have a chat. So. Right, 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 right. That was actually, I feel t- terrible that, you know, I just uh, take a little bit of your time. But oh, don't that, worry, don't worry. Go not on. really. Okay, great. So I'm from Ukraine, Tanya. Mm-hmm. My name is Tanya. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Uh, um, um, I've been teaching for a long time you know, a few years, and right. Uh, right now I would, you know, just to try something new, right. and as I understand, the uh, online teaching is something really popular right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I'm thinking, you know, teaching English, and I just wanted to know what's your opinion, as you're so experienced, and, uh, um, you know, what do you think? I'm not native, but uh, do you think it's a good idea, or... Um... <laughs> I think I think there's, you know, there's lots you can do to help people to improve their English using technology. Right. Um, I mean, you can... You can do what I do, you know. You don't have to be a, a, a fluent, a, you know, a native speaker to to mm-hmm. teach to teach English. And the way I do it with my materials is, um, you know, the, the the speaking practice that students have mm-hmm. is considerably more than in a one to one lesson or a group lesson. That's you know a conventional lesson. And um, even an on, and most people teach online, and they 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 teach using Skype or in a virtual classroom. But they still try and teach the same way that they taught, or they right. teach, or they teach, you know, in in, in, cla- in classrooms or the you know I call it the real world. But you know, online is the real world now. But um, mm-hmm. so the key is to. What I think you should do is, and what I tell other teachers to do is, is what I do is, is act like a facilitator, a guide. You know, help them to use Skype, help them to use Facebook, help them to find people to speak to, to make friends who are English speakers in different parts of the world, and then you can um, sell them some of our, my materials. You can even teach them online, go through the exercises with them one-to-one or in a group in a virtual classroom, but then they have to do the speaking practice, Mm -hmm. and they record the speaking practice using um, their free recording applications that work with Skype. Just type in um, MP3 Skype recorder, and you'll you'll find it. Um, Let me just type it in for you. Just, Mm -hmm. Just... just Google this. Okay. Actually, I can give you um, some links from my my podcast that some FAQs that have got all the links on. Hold on. And then you know you can just help them to um, to study the language, but then also support them through building relationships with a group of English speakers and then they get lots and lots of focused practice and then get them to listen to the recordings again. So they they make the recordings then if you set up a, a closed Facebook group and then their their assignment, their homework is to post a recording into your Facebook group, um, then you know they've done the assignment. You can comment on their work. They can ask you questions. And and then you can do, you know, face-to-face if you want that they want to pay for. So you can, you know, it's all about helping people to help themselves. Right, okay. And, and getting them into speaking practice situations that are at their level, their speaking level or just above, mm-hmm. and and then getting them to listen to themselves speaking English, speaking the English from the lesson. 
and and they'll improve really quickly, you know. Mhm. So um, is it um, more like just help them break this? You know, sometimes people have just this performance anxiety just when they. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This right. This is the 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 the, the goal. Or just to teach them the the, uh, the vocabulary. I mean, what what do you think? Uh, what well, well, lots of people have a yeah. You're right. It's, you know, performance anxiety about speaking because the way they've been taught is they've been taught to they've been taught English primarily the way you teach someone to read and write, not to speak. Mm-hmm. And and so. What they do before they speak is they, you know, and they've had they they haven't had enough speaking practice to have developed uh, a reflexive ability to use the simple patterns of communication, right. and and that's the key thing. So you you got to get them thinking in English. So you got to, right. um, you know, when when someone who's a bit nervous about speaking a second language tries to do it in a real conversation they feel huge pressure because what they do is they try to create sentences the way they they write so they start trying to create a perfect sentence and trying to do that in under the pressure of a normal conversation means that the pressure increases the longer they try and create it for right. and then when they get to a certain point the pressure is too much and they can't speak or they speak something that is doesn't make any sense so 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 you the the thing is to start with very easy stuff okay. but just but just to get them into conversations with english speakers and and you have to they have to be prepared so they have to be in control so that's what our materials do they 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 give them some words they they get them them thinking about the language they get the questions prepared then they have the conversation then they say goodbye then they li- then they listen again so it's about increasing the amount of information their brain gets that helps them pick up the natural patterns of simple communication once they get that the simple communication and they can you know respond in normal time quite quickly then they can add more language and more vocab but it's it's a, it's about getting through the fear you know right right mm-hmm. okay there you go here's a here's a link to my podcast with some FAQs have a look there's more on there i've listened i've listened a little have you all oh, right you've oh, been listening okay. <laughs> yes a lot and i was so impressed you know the the, the how soon and how fast the, they improved you know your students and I just wanted to ask, do you think it's something like the natural skills that they have, you know, or it's uh, the motivation or your support? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear that. What, what was the question? Okay, so I listened to, uh, to the, almost to all of them, you know, right. the yeah. and uh, the, um, the, the improvement was so dramatic, you know, yeah, just after yeah. a few, uh, not a few, but uh, some hours you can you can definitely hear that the person is so much fluent and better and confident. Mm. And it, do you know? I mean, it's 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 just because they've been able to, you know, the amount of information they've received that's comprehensible that they understand has been increased dramatically. So that naturally, their brain. It's like it's like you know, like. It's 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 the way we learn our first language, but it's more focused, and because we're adults, it's it makes it has more effect. Also, if someone has studied English for a long time, mm-hmm. uh, their often their their reading and writing level is different from their speaking level, mm-hmm. which is probably true in Ukraine quite a bit. Not the school system. And and so yeah, yeah, it's 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 the legacy of the way that English has been taught. And and so when someone can read and write fairly well but can't speak very well, it's it's just a simple it's a lack of practice, a lack of confidence. Right. And Mm. and and what they need to do is start with simple stuff and then build up, but also get some 
into some practice relationships with, with some friendly people online. Who you, it's easy to meet people on Facebook. As a teacher, you can join the Skype Education, which is a website where teachers help their classes meet each other. Um, and I think I've got all the links on there. But it's 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 not, you know, my teaching isn't, it's not me being an amazing teacher because anyone can do this. Mm-hmm. It's it's a process. It's a psychological process where the amount of useful information for the brain is increased dramatically by focusing, doing the language, using language at the right level, and then listening again to yourself. That's it. Simple. Yeah, and listen more. Go to yourself. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, Ethan, um, you know, it, it was uh, an honor to talk to you, really. I, I really appreciate No, I'm serious, because uh, I'm trying to up. You know, I have my own kids, and yeah. they were born in the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, then we moved to Ukraine, and, uh, you know, I'm trying to uh, start talking, actually. Uh, in, we're, we're speaking English uh, all the time. Right. And also, I have my own class. Uh, I, you know, I opened the little class in Kabush in the town where I live. So um, I love it and I try different approaches and uh, sometimes just instinctively, you know, and then I listen about that. It appears that it's something good. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, so um, it, it's interesting because of all your experience, uh, it, it's, you know, wonderful to talk and just um, listen one more time. It's a really important thing that you like. Uh, I, I read on your um, uh, site also, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I say so I've been doing this for ten years, and I started English out there in in two thousand and one. So it's, it's it's you know quite a long list. Twelve, twelve years now. No, eleven years. Uh-huh. But um, it just seems very natural to me that that this is how it works because. We started English out there in in London, and the idea was simply to improve on the English lessons we were giving to people, mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. to improve them by taking people, teaching them something, then taking them out of the classroom, oh, and, and 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 getting them speaking to local people, so strangers, mm-hmm. and we and we worked out how to do that, and when we started doing it, we had like students, especially Japanese students who would normally you know they'd come and and like we'd always had them they'd come to the school and we'd test them and they 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 wouldn't speak because they were so shy and nervous right right and in a, in a conventional school my previous school which I ran for 9 years you know they'd make a little bit of progress in 4 or 6 weeks but you know not not huge amounts and when we were doing it with EOT, we were seeing people going from not being able to speak to not being able to shut them up after four weeks, because they just, okay. they just, it was like, it was like something opened, you know, the gates, and they just kept talking in English without a problem, and and it's about, it's the psychology of it more than the linguistic mm-hmm. side of it, you know, mm-hmm. and, and and lots of. Virtually all language teaching ignores the, um, you know, the psychology of speech and the um, the way the brain stores or, or, or you know, mm-hmm. stores stores and processes language and retrieves information. So it, it's it's you know the way the way the way language in English has been taught and still is taught by most organizations is is not very helpful to people who want to learn English <laughs> right you know it's it's people who succeed are, are just hugely determined and they usually do it for themselves it's not down to any method they've been given or any materials they've been given but um you know it, it it's they usually do it just through increasing themselves through increasing the amount of input that they understand and that's all that EOT is but it 
it, it's, it can be used with, with technology, you know, it's, it's easy. Right, right. You know, um, when I had uh, my little students, um, mm. and uh, after class, sometimes we met just, you know, accidentally somewhere out, and when I just asked them some simplest questions, something like, where are you going, or how are you doing, and they couldn't answer it, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So in the cl in, inside, in, in the classroom, they were good, you know, but outside, they just totally were lost, and mm. that's, I found the answer on your side, you know, so it's mm -hmm. normal. I was thinking something bad, something more can doing or something you know like how is it possible that they right. yeah but the classroom is not a real situation so yeah. you know I understand. Mm -hmm. it's like it depends on the classroom and the, and the student and the age they are and stuff like that but you know a, a student knows in a classroom that it's kind of safe and secure right. and their friends are there and they know the teacher and all of that so you know if they're comfortable with that then they're going to be able to say what the teacher wants them to say and have a little conversation but when faced with a stranger who's not a teacher you know they're they're going to freak out a bit sometimes mm -hmm. <laughs> and and the, the only way the only way to get through that is to prepare to be freaked out and and, and, and prepare what you're going to say carefully and understand and, and, and guess, you know, what what's going to come back. And then right. the person... You give the shock all the time, right? And then they're backing you into the shock. <laughs> yeah, it's not, I mean, you know, it shouldn't be too big a shock because the, the materials prepare them for that. But it just gives them more control of the conversation. Okay. Mm -hmm. And And your role as a teacher, you know, doing EOT or, you know, helping people is is you can provide some of the speaking practice, you know, before they, they go and speak to their their fluent or native speaker partners online. But your role will be you know, can be just to organise and motivate and, and and give assurance and support and stuff like that. And that's okay. that, that's a, a fantastic thing to do, much more than trying to teach people grammar, because they can go and learn about grammar anywhere for free online. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is to give them proper emotional support, you know, to get them through the tough bit at the start and help them keep going so that they, be, they build these relationships with, with people who are happy to talk to them. And there's lots of people who are happy to talk. There are lots of people who, who are interested in people from other countries. There are old people who are retired people who are online, you know, who use Facebook and Google Plus and places like that. So mm -hmm. it's, 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 you know, and, 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 and there are sites now for teachers to meet who and put their classes together for practice. So there's nothing stopping you. <laughs> Right, you know, the possibilities are endless, and, uh, you know, but uh, uh, it's really, it, you know, not good just to find something the best of the best, you know, so just to skip all the, uh, you know, trying and just, um, <laughs> so I think this idea is great. Um, I mean, that's what I read uh, about the school uh, English out there. I loved it instantly. Instantly, I was thinking, even if in the room um, of the school, just do something like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe like um, even to divide the the big, uh, you know, like a few rooms or like this is this, you know, like uh, something like a workshop, like a grammar show, uh, studio, you know, whatever. Something just mm -hmm. have kids move, actually move physically, and it's also something. Because it's really hard just to have kids out, you know, all the time mm -hmm. to practice things. So I love this idea. It, it's so wonderful. Something completely new for Ukraine. Nobody did it before. Yeah, no, no. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are people doing it all around the world, but there's not that many of us compared to, you know, everyone else. But it's growing. I and, love it. And, um, you know, one day lots more people will do it. Because, you know, the, the point is it works. So, so it's not like, you know, it's a difficult thing to, to sell because if you, if what I do, you know, with my podcast is 
I do that because it's just to show people, like you, hey, look, you know, all you do is follow the exercises, speak to some people, record it, listen again, and in 10, 20 weeks, you'll be speaking English comfortably. That's it. You know? Mm-hmm. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a, that's a great thing for a teacher to be able to do, is say, you know, when someone says, oh, you know, are you a good teacher? Say, okay, well, if you've done a few, you've worked with a few students and recorded them at the start and record them at the end, and then mm-hmm. edit edit the two clips together, right. and, then, and then just send them the link and saying, this is one of my students. At the start, at the end, there you go. Oh, wonderful. It's, I was actually impressed because when I uh, listened to the podcast, okay, before I was, uh, you know, hoping just to hear something like really some message that I was just, you know, trying to something completely new. But then I'm listening and I hear they are talking and talking to the student and you just do the minimum. It, it just, you know, looks like that, right? Like just kind of encouraging them, you know, but not... It's not your part, it's their part, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not, it's not, um, I don't, I don't correct. I mean, when I talk to people, when I, when I talk to people, I, I, I don't correct like a teacher. Right. You know, I, what I do, what I do is I, I, I set up, if I don't understand, I mean, I do understand usually, but if, but I know that a native speaker or a fluent speaker might not understand or whatever, so, what I do is I, I I do what a non-teacher would do. I say, sorry, uh-huh, what? Can you say that again? Spell it. And, and, and set up a little negotiation to find the meaning and let them get the pleasure out of helping me to understand. <laughs> you know? Right. And then, they, then when we both go, ah, ah. That that the aha moment is when learning takes place, you know, and then when they listen to it again, they can hear themselves adjusting their pronunciation or working to find the meaning to get it clear to me, right. and and that is learning taking place. All right, okay, but Jason, just uh, some you know really like uh, grammar, like. Uh, the grammar mistake, something like, you know, as in the third, uh, you know, uh, in he, she, he, you correct this this thing or ignore them? Completely? Depends. It dep- just depends on the on person. The level, right? well, it depends, something you know, like with Liliana, mm-hmm. um, at the start I let her just go on and, and I wanted to encourage her to be more fluent, so I didn't correct her, because if you correct someone, then you're you 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 can stop them being fluent because you're making them be more self conscious. Oh, okay. uh, mm-hmm. So I let her go on and on. But then I sort of thought, all right, let's start trying to hammer out. Let's try and work on the pronunciation and some habitual mistakes. So then I said to her, you know, like, do you want me to correct you a bit more? And got her permission. And then I started correcting her a bit more in conversation, which slowed her down. So she started, she slowed down, so she was thinking more about what she was going to say mm-hmm. and, 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 and being more accurate. So we got her more accurate, and then when she, when she became more accurate, then I stopped correcting her and let her become more fluent again. Okay, I understand. Mm-hmm. See? <laughs> wow, it's so smart, you know. It's so smart. Well, it's just, it's just, just you know, listening to people and and just gently like Valdek um he didn't use the the um the definite article very much or correctly and so I kind of I I took I thought I'd experiment with him and I found a lesson with the uh, the definite article and, and and got him to do that lesson then corrected him quite hard on it and I got him to use it correctly, you know. I just focused on the one thing, but did it with the practice. And he started doing it, which was impressive. And, and that's quite unusual. Um, but it works because he listened to himself. And he did it with some other people and listened to himself again. So what he what we basically did was was, you know, in a normal lesson, you do it and say it. 
and that would be that. And so the time you'd spend on it would be, you know, whatever, 20 minutes, an hour or something like that. Mm -hmm. But by doing it my way, the EOT way, he did 20 minutes with me. He studied it for about an hour beforehand or an hour and a half on his own, getting it clear, he said, did 20 minutes with me, then did 20 minutes with three or four other people. So mm -hmm. he had an hour of actual using it with four different people and he recorded them all and listened to them all again. So he doubled or tripled that time. And because it was him speaking and being corrected and, and, and saying the words, his brain was much more interested in the audio and what was mm -hmm. going on because it was him. Right. So, so, you know, the ratio of what Crasham would call comprehensible input for his brain from a normal, from a conventional lesson to an EOT lesson is about, you know, God, it's about 600% more, maybe more than that. Oh. So it's, that's how it works, you know? Mm hmm, mm hmm. Wonderful. Okay, you give me so many good advices, you know, so now I have to write it down okay. because I'm so excited. <laughs> well, you don't, you don't have to write it down because what I do, I should have told you at the start, but most people are fine with it. I usually record my calls when I talk to teachers. <laughs> I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an inveterate recorder of calls. <laughs> so, yes, you are, you are being recorded. So, if you want, if it's okay, you can listen to this again. And I'll put it on the podcast as an FAQ from you. Uh, but what do you want? Did you, 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 uh, did you record us? Have yeah. you recorded? Yeah. Really? Yeah. See, this is the point. See, this is experience talking. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, but you're asking me questions as a teacher and then... You know, then we have a nice conversation, and then other teachers might want to listen to your questions. So I just figure that it's much, it's much easier just to record it and then ask you for your permission at the end. And then you can listen again, so you don't have to take notes, and, and then other people can listen as well. Well, well okay. easy. On your side, Jason, or the, on your side with the other podcast? Yeah. I have a question, but do not, do not record now, okay? Please. What? <laughs> Did I, um, okay, have I made a lot of mistakes? No, you've done very well. No, but... <laughs> Yeah, you've done, done well. You've asked good questions. Okay, well, I, yeah, of course. You have the permission, and I, I love this idea. And I'm going to share the link with my friends, absolutely, you know. Yeah, do it, you see. Then it, I mean, it's just it's just a very good, it's a great way of creating content, you know, and informing people. It's, it's, it's much easier than, you know, right. trying to create formal videos and formal audios and stuff like that, because the natural flow of, of a conversation is, is is quite relaxing and interesting often to people, you know. All right, and also the emotions, you know. Also. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm just uh, at the beginning of, of this new experience, so uh, I'm sure that after a few uh, months or something, I would have more um, more clear and more defined questions, something more practical. You know, right now my questions are so general that uh, I feel that I, uh, you know, have the possibility to ask such an experienced uh, person about uh, uh, this, and I'm like uh, a little bit lost, you know. <laughs> no, 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 you, you, you did well. Don't worry, don't worry, you did fine. All right, well, Jason, if uh, you ever... Uh, we'll be in Ukraine, in West Ukraine, in the West. You're always welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> Just let me know that okay. you have the plans to come here, and I would love to, you know, to show you my school, uh, my class, my room. So, uh, for right now, I really, really thank you a lot. That's okay, no problem. All right, nice, nice talking. Me too, me too. I wish you all the best and thanks a lot okay. for your time and advice. All right, cheers. Okay, bye. 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 bye.